As you guys can see, I'm not taking it too seriously, so I hope you don't either. Whew, all right. So what do we got? What do we got cooking? <laughs> Literally, cooking. Uh, I bet you guys can't guess what I... Gosh darn, I can't stand not having my a little prop to hold my phone up. The tripod's at the house. But yeah, we got a little uh, whoo -hoo -hoo, Frank's Red Hot, Frank's... Frank's Reds. Frank's Frank is who owns the Red Hot. Red is not who owns the Hot. So just I'm I'm putting too many uh, possessive, you know, the apostrophes. Frank is who owns Red Hot. You know what? You know what that goes to. Well, everything. You can put it on pizza. You can put it in chili. You can put it on a good old good old fast sandwich. But uh, no, nah. no, nah, we're going with wings that's why you got the the blue cheese for those who eat ranch like to heck with you guys you guys are you're stinkers and your taste buds have yet to develop but yeah this episode of uh golly guys is gonna be a little different because we're actually gonna be doing some grilling gordon ramsay style wings with you know get that nice cast iron skillet get it get that skin nice and crispy with a little paprika little garlic powder, salt and pepper. Then you make your own little sauce. A little buttery, paprika, garlic. Red's hot. Red's, no, Frank's red hot. Gosh, I always get that wrong. I always want to call it red's hot. It's not red. What is red's? Who owns, what does red own? Frank owns red. Anyway. So back to the back to the main plot of today's episode of the Golly Guy. We're gonna grill some wings, Gordon Ramsay style, and then we're gonna take it to the garage, and I'm gonna teach you guys what I use this spring for some spring fishing. So I just kept thinking that I wanted to drink a monster at 8:41 p.m. Not sleeping tonight. Anyway, so I was fishing the other day at a local park, and some kids that, well, teenagers that were not catching anything were watching me just like kind of slam a few out of the water, and they were like, How? What are you throwing? And um, I think it's a little easier to catch fish if you know what lure and what water circumstance to really. To really catch them, to to real, you gotta you gotta know what to throw. That's a good one. Know what to throw. I like that. Anyway, you kind of have to know what to throw, and um, you know these kids were throwing jitterbugs all day, and our water's just not warm enough for top water quite yet. Our bass really haven't even started bedding yet, and it's literally early May. But then again, we are, it's it's early May and 57 degrees, pouring rain out May, so. Super gloomy weather for West Virginia. Our, we're like a month behind schedule on um, bedding and spawning and post-spawn season. So it's kind of weird right now. But um, they were amazed with the fact that their jitterbugs didn't work. And I was throwing lipless cranks in like a bluegill color and just killing them. And it kind of got me thinking, what if I were to do a video to teach you guys what I use, what I throw... During weather like this, where we're not really quite bedding or spawning season, and how I'm catching my fish. So, no further ado, uh, let's get to the house, because I got these wings sitting beside me, and I gotta start grilling. Then we're gonna hit the garage, I'm gonna eat those wings right in front of you guys, in front of the camera, make a mess, I don't care. And we're gonna, um, we're gonna talk about what I use to catch my fish 
at least right now. So, so yeah, let's uh, let's flip and do this. See you guys in a minute. All right, I think my oil is definitely a little bit too hot, so we gotta cool that sucker down just a hair. We got the old, mm, them old meat sticks, nice and seasoned. Probably a little bit too much seasoning in the spots. So we're gonna give her a couple more shakes. Now this is a very Gordon Ramsay. Actually, you guys can look it up on YouTube if you want the exact recipe. But, uh, it's a very Gordon Ramsay inspired hot wing. Dog's trying to get out. We're probably going to skip the garage today, too. I'm just going to go straight into it. A couple minutes to kill. So, yeah, my top three favorite lures for this spring season. Um... Kind of going low, going slow, sizing down. That transition is moving out. So we are looking at mostly a lot of moving baits. And these are my top three ways on how to catch these bass when it's just about bedding season. So uh, let's go ahead and let's whip out the first one. Let's, let's, let's go ahead and let's grab her. Mm. This is probably my number three favorite method on catching these springtime bass. So right now you want something that moves. You want something that's they're going to strike because of territorial reasons or feeding reasons because they're getting ready to actually start feeding for the spawn and the bed. So my number one fa or my number three favorite method right now, as you guys can see, is a good old fashioned belated jig. I don't care what brand it is. I don't care if it's Strike King Thunder Cricket. I don't care if you are throwing something by Molex, something that's actual, you know, oops, classic Z-Man chatterbait. You want something that's going to imitate forage. You're, you're going to want something that imitates the bait fish that these fish are normally striking on. So for me, we have a lot of panfish. Dogs are out. We have a lot of panfish, so I'm going to go with something more like this. It is the bluegill color original Z-Man Chatterbait. Um, this thing is perfect imitation for, well, pretty much all your bluegill and all your brim. Mostly all your big old panfish. Uh, and then the next best way, if you have shad, this one is the good old Guggenbaits Clickbait. This one is in their sexy shad colorway, so you got that nice white, the little yellow stripe, you got the blue top. Got just a classic silver blade, which it being nighttime, you probably can't even see it. Mine is bent to pieces and broke to pieces, but I don't really care because these things absolutely slay. So the reason why you want to throw a bladed jig is because it's going to imitate a lot. Uh, if you want to just slow hop it, drag it from the bottom, uh, that's a really good way to imitate a crawbait or a crawfish, crayfish, whatever you guys want to call them, craw dad, doesn't really matter. But yeah, you can get that. It's going to vibrate on the drop. It is going to work a lot like a regular jig. Uh, and the best thing is, these blades will kind of help keep grass off. So you can fish these things grassy bottom. You can fish these things open water. Grass edges, flats, it does not matter. A bladed jig is going to do the work for you. Uh, naturally, the next best method is just cast and retrieve. Of course, when you cast and retrieve these bad boys, you can adjust your blade to make it dive deeper or make it to where it's more shallow. So, uh, super versatile lure. Definitely a good go-to, go-to bait this time of the year. Should probably set these lures down, but I don't really care right now. You can really smell. So the, the ingredients that you're supposed to use for these is uh, paprika, salt, black pepper, uh, garlic powder, 
And just to make a little bit of a mix, I used some Frank's Red Hot. See, I got that right this time. Frank's Red Hot Dry Rub. Some dry powder. So, heck yeah. Let's, let's go for that. Okay, so uh, method number two of my favorite ways to catch springtime bass. A classic. The good old spinner bait. Now, spinner baits are super versatile because... The heavier you go, the deeper they're going to dive in the column. The lighter you go, the smaller you go, the more shallow, yet sometimes more presentable towards the forage that you're fishing for. So like right now, we've got one of the old white and chartreuse. This is a good go-to color for any situation. You can throw this in clear water because the white, you can throw this in, uh, you know, some of your darker waters, your uh, more muddy waters because the chartreuse is still going to stand out. And of course, with the Colorado blade, and the willow blade, you're gonna get a lot of thump and a lot of vibration. Um, this is pretty much your go-to classic way of throwing a spinnerbait. It's gonna have one of those two blades or it's gonna have both of those blades. Now these ones, I think this one's a 3 8 and I know my blue good one is a half, but it's always good to have multiple colors. The reason why is because of course white and chartreuse, always a go-to color for just about any kind of water clarity, but then you also have something like your bluegill in West Virginia. If you don't have bluegill colored baits, I don't know how you're catching these things because we don't have a lot of other forage fish. We don't have a lot of shad. Uh, we don't have a lot of shiners. So a lot of our bluegill, or not all bluegill, a lot of our bass are feeding off of things like your bluegill. Your bluegill and your minnows, your bullhead minnows, all that jazz. So having something that mimics a bluegill, you're going to catch more bass that way. Next lure that I personally like to throw the most is look at that Ooh, look at that mm. what that is is the Guggen Clutch aka a lipless crankbait now I am not affiliated with Guggen Squad so I kind of just buy whatever I want no drama from the YouTube aside I don't really care I've, I like buying lures I'm a lure junkie for sure the next one's going to be the Quake 70 by 6 another really go-to uh, lipless crank for me and the reason why I'm showing you guys these colors first is because if you have shad in your local waters these colors are gonna slay if you don't like us in West Virginia we don't have a lot of that um, they're still gonna do really well because of the white color scheme you usually always have either like some sort of silver flash to it or a little bit of yellow a little bit of chartreuse for those kind of Darker water, uh, darker weather, gloomy day kind of conditions. These are good go-to colors. Now, of course, with that being in mind, I have to check these things out because, once again, they smell like they're burning. Mm, nice little char to that one. Nice little char to that one. That one, not so much. Don't buy whole wings for this, guys. Whole wings are better for either a full deep fry or a full uh, bake. Anyway, the next go-to color. The next go-to color that I would be throwing, and the reason why I'm kind of showing you my go-to colors, and, well, the reason why I'm showing you my go-to colors is because those colors you can really catch a fish on all year, all season long with a lipless crankbait. But the next one, of course, is going to be a bluegill. This one is a Guggen Clutch in the Ghost Gill color scheme. You do have that nice little bluegill color pattern with a chartreuse tip tail. Um, this one has caught me more bigs. This exact color has caught me more bigs than any other lipless crank. So, I don't know what you guys are doing over at Guggen HQ designing these things, but my gosh, they just absolutely slay. And the next one that I have been fishing quite a bit is another lure by Sixth Sense. This is the 
bluegill spawn so you do have that more spawn bluegill color scheme um for me that color has been absolutely killing it because we're just about there uh for prime time fishing season now i know bluegill usually spawn a little bit afterwards but it's still a great color scheme to have in your arsenal All right, so look at the final product. <clears throat> Gordon Ramsay, I didn't do it right, but she's going to be good. So once again, just reiterating before I pour this nice, nice beverage and uh, chat out on my food. Once again, we got the old Google clickbait or any bladed jig. I go to spinnerbait. And last but not least, a good old lipless crankbait. Hope you guys learned something, as I also today have learned something. And that is to not take Gordon Ramsay recipes lightly. As you guys can see, I'm not taking it too seriously. So I hope you don't either. Try one of these out. Man. That right there. That is something. <clears throat> Till next time, guys. Welcome to Grillin' with the Dolly Guy. Ah.